Hey everyone, how you doing? This is episode 11 of Minecraft Stoneblock, and I'm Mark. Uh, today we're going to fix a problem that I discovered last week. Uh, when I finished the last episode, I did a quick look around the base before I logged off and went down to the storage room and discovered our storage drawers. Well, our storage overflow crate was completely full of armor. So I went upstairs and took a look in the garden and discovered the harvesters were all just flooding resources out on the floor because the ender chest was backstuffed and there was no place for the resources to go and they just kept happily harvesting. So I dumped a bunch of the armor that we've been accumulating from our mob farm, shut down the mob farm and turned everything back on and that went back to work as expected. But we need to deal with armor. So today I'm going to do that. I am going to, I've done some pre-crafting here. You can see we've got a lot of stuff for uh, and Ender IO components, and I am going to make the slice and splice, which is a Ender IO machine that lets us make advanced item filters and big item filters. And we need those to deal with the armor because advanced item filters let us filter and ignore metadata and ignore damage. And armor comes through damage and it comes through with enchant, so we need those features to make efficient filters. And the biggest stumbling block here, I mean, this stuff is energetic alloy and, you know, it's iron and grains of infinity, so it's nothing super complex, but this, the uh, soul machine chassis, requires this solitude dye blend which requires soul powder and it requires this organic brown dye and organic black dye. And these are made with, you know, in the alloy smelter and you've got to make, you know, pulverized charcoal and slime balls. And then the brown dye, you have to go and make twigs and prunings, which get from shrubs, which you run through the sag mill and grass, which you use to get clippings and trimmings, which we use for uh, other blocks that we're going to make today. So there was a bunch of pre-crafting I did and that's all done. So you don't have to sit here and watch me run around like a chicken with my head cut off. And we have everything we need to make the slice and splice. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is we need to put this simple machine chassis and a solitude dye blend into the induction smelter, which we already have. So I'm going to go ahead and make this. And I just need one for now, so I'm going to take that and mm -hmm. one of these chassis that I've already made. And these are really simple. We, we've made these before. They are just iron, iron bars, and grains of infinity. And we have our induction smelter, so we can stick these in here and just smelt it up. And they're not going to take too long. And there's our soul machine chassis. And if we use this, I think we should have everything we need except possibly a mop head. Nope, we even have that. So there's our slice and splice. The other thing the slice and splice needs is an axe and a pair of shears. And oh, and it needs a capacitor. And I did make capacitors. They're not super difficult. I made double layers. And you can see the recipe for those is it's just coal and energetic alloy, which we can make in the smeltery. And basic capacitors, which are just gold and copper and grains of infinity. So I went ahead and made those. I'm going to stick one of those in our slice and splice. And we still need the axe and the shears. Those we can make just basic. You can't use tinkers tools for these, but you can just make sort of basic. I'm going to use iron because we don't, you know, you need this machine, but you don't need it all that often. So these tools should do fine for us. And this is cabled up to that same cable system that all these machines are plugged into. So it'll fill up and we can now make we should be able to make big item filters. And there is the big item filter. 
So we need, this is a component we need, the, the skeletal contractor, which is solarium, rotten flesh, which we have, skulls, which we have, uh, silicon says solarium is what we need and solarium we make how did we make that again it is soul sand plus gold ingots in the uh, I did make a bunch of that good I didn't want to have to sit here and make a bunch of that so let me look at this again we need some silicon rotten flesh and a skull so we pull Silicon, we have a bunch. Oh, you know what? I can get rid of these last two pieces of silicon that we don't want. We need a skull. And I keep, I keep doing that. I keep pulling out stacks when I want only one. And what was the last piece we needed? We needed the, oh, rotten flesh. So... Let me stick these bits in here, and it should, no, that's not what we want. We want this here, and we want you here and here, and we want you here, I believe. And that is going to make us our skeletal contractor. Right? Right. So we take this, And we look at the recipe again, and we need pulverized obsidian, which we can make pretty easily. We have obsidian right here. Thought I made some of that, but maybe not. I did make Certus Quartz Dust. I have been doing some work on Applied Energistics 2, which hopefully we can get to today as well. And this is going to take... A few minutes. So let me go ahead and look at the uh, advanced item filter, which is right here. And this has sort of the similar layout. We need this uh, Z Logic controller, which is solarium, silicon, redstone, and zombie heads. So we need zombie heads, and I'm going to get like five of those, and we need some. Solarium, which we have, which is like that, and the silicon is like that. And what was the last bit we needed? Oh, redstone. Did I get it right? Yeah. So I am going to go ahead and just grab a stack of redstone, and that's what we're going to be making. So I'm going to stick five of these in here because we're going to want... Oh, we can only do these one at a time. That's too bad. I thought they let us stack. All right, there's our pulverized obsidian. So we can make the big item filter because we have everything we need for that. And I'm not going to use this right away. I actually want the advanced item filter because the first thing I want to deal with is uh, the overflowing armor downstairs because that is our biggest problem so far. And I'm going to make a few of these because unfortunately these only have the standard sort of limited number of slots and we have quite a bit of armor to filter I think four gives us a good start so take those and look at the advanced item filter we have everything we need so I want to actually make a bunch of these. So let's make four and then we can go downstairs and start applying these. I have rearranged things here a little bit. We had our Ender IO chest and, and sort of junk chest here and it was a little crowded for what I wanted to do. So I brought it all around back here to give us a little extra room. So this is the same basic setup. Uh, 
this is extracting as fast as possible. Um, I did apply a redstone signal controller to this so I can turn it off at will. It's running right now, but I am going to turn it off for a minute. Just you can see it starts to backfill immediately. And this is our overflow chest and it's got a bunch of armor in it. So what we need to do is we're going to start dumping stuff in trash cans. And if I have, let me just see if I have a couple, I do have a couple chests. Let me, where did they go? All right, I'm going to take these chests and just for now, I'm going to plop them down in place of these trash cans, which is always a good idea when you're testing uh, item filters like this because it's easy to make a mistake. Um, so the first thing I want to do is we have a bunch of leather armor in here and I'm going to get one piece of each kind of leather armor or each part of the leather armor. And if I open this, you can see we have, we have more room, but we don't have, you know, a huge amount of space. So I'm going to go ahead and filter on all these. And we're going to ignore metadata and we're ignoring damage. Uh, we don't care about MBT, I don't think. And we're not dealing with or dictionary. And we're whitelisting these. So that means that anything that matches this recipe is going to go into this this interface so we're going to do we're going to put the filter in and we're going to insert on green and this should now be pulling yep we're pulling the leather armor out of here because recall this this chest is always set to both insert and extract and mm -hmm. if i stick more leather armor in here it will all end up in this chest eventually. Yep, there it goes. Just flashed out and there it is. So that filter is working for leather armor. So our process here is we go through and we do this for steel swords and we do it for osmium swords and we do it for all this junk armor that we don't care about and glowstone swords and we only need to do it for one each so we can do this right in in here and i'll just do glowstone and those and stick those two back in and they should disappear it takes a, a minute or two because it does a full scan but you can see they just disappeared and that's our filtering system. So I am going to go away for a minute and I'm going to add all the armor that's in here to our filtering system and go ahead and put the trash cans in place and make sure it all works. And then we can stop worrying about this so much and actually move on with something productive. So I'll be right back. Okay. So we are back and I have gone ahead and set up all these filters. I've set the inputs to these trash cans to only insert because you can't take anything out of a trash can. It's gone instantly. And I did have to turn on ignore MBT. So uh, it would accept all these enchanted versions and plain versions of all this armor. So you can see I've just gone through and all the armor types are in here. I have some spare slots there and a few spare slots there. So there's probably a couple weapons we'll end up putting in there. And our chest is empty. Uh, we have trophies and I might actually filter out trophies eventually because uh, we don't really care about those. And I am going to turn on our system again. And we should see really no armor hit this anymore. Not sure why that silicon is. Oh, that's that oddball silicon. See, this is what I talk about. The Ender IO versus the applied energistics. And to fix that, I am just going to pitch that because we have a ton of silicon. So that takes care of the armor problem. The uh, next problem that we need to solve is dealing with the output of the bag opener. And that is 
a little more interesting because what we want to do there is we want to save some of the stuff from the bag opener and but not a lot of it there's there's not a ton of stuff we want to save from the bag opener i'm going to grab a couple crates just to have them available and go down here and take a look i'm also going to turn our mob farm farm back on because i had it off to deal with the armor so we can turn the lights on grinders are still on yep and turn off that so if we go downstairs we have 11,000 loot bags in here but uh, if we start opening these if we start opening these yes why are you not working oh i did move this around a little bit so i guess i better set it up right yep okay now we should be opening yeah so the easier thing to do here rather than filter the stuff we don't care about into a trash can and this is sort of our surrogate trash can here what i want to do is well this is actually going to be our surrogate uh, keeper box. What I want to do is filter the items we want into this box and everything else can go up here. So what I'll do is, because there's a lot more stuff that goes up here than in here. So the first thing I want to do is, uh, what do I want? I definitely want these storage upgrades and I definitely want the ingots and the wither skulls and the superior essence so if i put these oops these in here and you can see the big item filter is actually pretty big if i put these in here uh i had this i had this and this is a white list and we don't really care about metadata in this case um, if we put this in the insert slot and we make this priority one, anything that's in this list is going to go in here, right? And what we'll do is we're going to set this to priority minus one. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Uh, we're going to set this to priority minus one and just leave it empty. So basically anything that doesn't go in here is going to go up here and get recycled, which is fine. Um, so this is going to involve me sitting here and looking at this and seeing what comes out and moving the items that we want into this crate. And this crate will eventually replace with a... Uh, ender chest so they'll end up in the storage system and you know we we kind of want overgrowth seeds because we will do some botania eventually so i'll stick those in there and i put two of those in there for some reason so i don't care about that and this is not set to insert so i can go ahead and set this i can go ahead and turn on the extraction here and anything that we filtered will get moved out there's not a lot in here uh the wither skulls didn't we do wither skulls oh i actually have to turn this on too now <laughs> there we go the wither skulls uh i guess i'll do growth crystals too because those are still useful and you can see there's five in here even though i only put in three so it's going to clear this out and everything that's in here that's not uh, not something you want gets recycled so if I set this to there was nothing in there I really cared about if I set this to insert you can see it's just sucking all this stuff out and it's gone it's not in here so it's been recycled and we got more loot bags out of the deal I am gonna leave this right now I'm gonna leave this off because what I want to do is run a bunch of bags and improve this filter uh, to give me everything I want. And it's going to take a little time 
but I wanted to walk through it with you so you could understand what's going on here. So I'm not going to do it all on camera. It's, it's time consuming and a little tedious. Um, we can look in here and we can see that we're getting tons of mob drops and there's some loot bags coming through. Eventually we're probably going to have to upgrade some of these extraction pipes so we can keep up, but for now we're, we're doing okay. So let's go ahead and since the mob farm is running, we should make sure that we're not getting any more armor stuck down in our storage crate overflow because that would mean that we'd have to add it to our filters. And I don't think we'll get a ton. There might be one or two oddball pieces that I didn't get a filter for. But overall, we should be in pretty good shape. We probably have a couple things like shovels, maybe. No, we're doing well. Uh, it looks like we're backing up on flower essence, which is okay. See, now, now we have a much larger backup for things we don't... Uh, things we care about so I can deal with uh, drawer overflows because I'm pretty sure that's what's going on here is we're just backing up that drawer. I'm not going to worry about it for now. We don't really care about these potions. So that's another thing I can just throw in one of these filters and they will all just disappear. I can stick uh, this in here because it'll get stored for me. And that takes care of most of our item problems. So the next thing I want to do is hop over to where I set up a AE2 automation system. And I'm going to put the final touches on this today. And I may or may not have everything I need to do it. So I may have to go away for a minute. So this should look familiar. It's pretty similar to the layout I had set up last episode. We've got you know, energy acceptor. We've got a crystal growth chamber, which is just sitting there for now. It's not really in the final position that I'm going to keep it in. And then we have the advanced inscribers I said I was going to make. And if we look in here, this setup should be familiar. We've got the, the silicon press printing silicon. We've got the inscriber press printing circuits. And, you know, these are all doing their thing. And you can see one of the advantages here. These all accept stacks and you can also lock some of the slots so automation won't insert into these. So you can do a pure uh, AE2 setup with these and you know you can use ME interfaces and uh, import export buses to throw ingredients into all this stuff and it's big and it takes lots of channels and it's confusing. Uh, Ender IO conduits do a really good job of managing all this and they're much easier to deal with. So this is one of my favorite projects for these. So we are going to pull out a whole bunch of, if I have them, item filters. And what do we need to filter on? Well, this is the simplest case. This is just uh, going to take silicon. And it presses it and oops, that's full. So it's not going to actually do anything. So I'll take half of that stack out and you can see it just, just pressed another one. I could put this whole thing in here and it's going to press it. So all this, all this unit needs is it needs to uh, accept silicon. And that's it. That's the only filter we need to put on there. And we can insert. And at this end, we have two crates. And one is our input. And this should be set to extract it. It will be always active. I'm going to leave it off for now. And this one will be extract. And this is going to be extracting only the final products we're making. And the final products we're making are, aha, I was clever. I put this stuff here. I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff for now, just so I don't have it cluttering my inventory. We are making processors. That's the only thing we're ever taking out of this system. We don't care about any of these intermediate products. And these are all inputs. So I'm going to make a filter. And all it is going to do is whitelist our processors. And did I set these? I did. That's going to be input. This is going to be the output. 
So you are going to be inserting on green and you are only going to accept those and we can turn off extract. So any processors we make end up here, right? So we have silicon presses. We don't, we don't ever care about these going anywhere outside the system. So they can just sit here. And now we have the next step, which is we're making engineering circuits and Certus uh, calculation circuits, for circuits from Certus quartz, and we're making logic circuits from gold. So the only thing these need are those base ingredients. So we have more uh, circuits, and we have our three ingredients. And you know what? I'm just going to do one of these. I'm not going to walk through them all because they're all the same. So we'll do the diamond all the way through. Uh, so we have the item filter. All we accept is diamonds. And which one? Okay. Those are the printed engineering circuits, which you make with diamonds. So this is put the diamond filter in here. And we insert on green. And we're going to always extract but I'm not turning that on yet because we don't have any place for the circuit to go so down here this is the complicated one this one actually needs the engineering process it needs the uh, it needs the printed engineering circuit it needs a piece of printed silicon and it needs a piece of red stick because remember that's how we make these if we stick uh, if we stick all three of these in, you can see it starts to work immediately and it's going to print an engineering processor. So that is what we need to stick in there. So we have not a diamond. That's not what I want. I want an engineering circuit and I want a piece of redstone and I want a printed silicon circuit. And we take one more item filter and we set this up with those three ingredients. And we stick this item filter in here and we're inserting. And now remember this one is producing our printed engineering circuit. So if we go ahead and set this to always active extract, it's going to start dumping all the printed engineering circuits in here. Right? So if we actually want to get a engineering, uh, a complete engineering processor out, we have to give it the silicon and the redstone that it needs, which means we need to turn this extract on. It's going to suck those out. That's going to run. You can see it's running. And we go look here and eventually, oh, you're not set to extract. We're always extracting from this as well because the only thing it's going to allow us to extract is the final product. And there is our engineering processor. So anytime we want to make an engineering processor here, all we have to do is do is put three things in. We can put in a piece of silicon and this isn't going to work quite yet because this guy is uh, not extracting. So we're going to extract and you're immediately going to backfill this, which is fine. Eventually what we end up with is we end up with, uh, I'm going to front load a ton of silicon into in here to just fill all these slots with silicon. In fact, I can just do that. I'm going to take these out. This is, this is sort of the state we're going to be in uh, most of the time. We're going to have empty here. We're going to have backfilled silicon. We're going to have empty here. And so these three are all complete. So I want a, I want a engineering processor. So that should be a piece of silicon, a diamond, and a piece of redstone, right? So I stick those in here and there's nothing. Oh, let me pull that out just to prove that it works. So if I stick these in here, the silicon's getting sucked in here. You can see it's running. 
goes and it gets sucked out. This and this have already run and there's our engineering processor which just vanished and now down here we have our engineering processor. So this is a complete system. Once I add these two units or these four units actually to the system we'll be able to produce all those processors automatically. Um, there's a little more setup. I have to completely backfill all these with silicon circuits which means Really, all I have to do is we have a ton of silicon, so I can just dump a bunch of silicon and get this started. Um, and you're looking at this and you're going, but Mark, it's not connected to anything. Well, that's the easy part. So once we get uh, our actual AE2 system up and running, recall that this is our sort of where we put our materials and this is where we get our results. We put an ME interface on this crate connected to the system and we put recipes for each of the processors that use those base ingredients, you know, diamond gold or, or pure certus quartz plus redstone plus one piece of silicon. We make those recipes, we put those into the, this ME interface and then we put an import bus here and we're done. We can make all our our uh, processors on demand as soon as we get the rest of the system connected. So that is processor automation. It's nice and compact because Ender IO conduits are, are pretty sweet for doing this kind of stuff and let you, let you, uh, give you a lot of control over what goes where. So we're kind of done with this. And the only other thing I want to do is I kind of want to do the growth uh, chamber, but I need to do a little more work here to get the growth chamber up and running. So let me go away for a minute and I'll also check our time and see how we're doing. I think we're ru probably running pretty long here, but the growth chamber is pretty quick. So I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. This is even simpler than these to set up the growth chamber because the only thing the growth chamber will accept is seeds and the seeds are nether quartz, certus quartz, and fluix. And I'm going to go ahead and set this up for all three of these even though we probably won't use fluix seed a whole lot since we're growing fluix, uh, growing fluix crystals using mystical agriculture. Not going to need this a whole lot but we do need the certus quartz seeds because that makes pure certus which Sometimes you need, and I don't think we actually need nether quartz seeds either, but I'm going to go ahead and take full advantage of the capabilities. So this will only accept the seeds. So we have the same setup as over here. We have an input crate and an output crate. And the only thing we really have to filter is we just have to make sure that this uh, extract pipe will only extract our final products. And that's what I've set up. Those are our pure, pure crystals. So when I throw the seeds in here, they're going to go to the wrong place because I'm stupid. Um, let me just do that. Yeah, I should probably filter that export. So they're only exporting. Uh, it's only accepting our final products, but this will work. No, are you not set to input? Oh, well, there you go. And put these back here. They will get exported and they're not going to end up here because this is set to a lower a lower priority insert. It's minus one. This is priority zero. And there's our crystals are starting to grow. And you can see that the Ender IO conduit moves, moves these at uh, four per movement and they grow pretty quickly. Once they're complete, they will get pulled out and knockwood end up in the right place. Yep, there they go. And they should end up here. So that is automation for these. And again, same principle applies. We can just stick uh, an ME interface with the right recipes here and a uh, import bus here to pull the final crystals out and we're done with automation. Now I, I might actually add a crafter here to do the seed creation 
the seed recipe is really easy. It's just the crushed version of the appropriate crystal with some sand, and that gives you two seeds. So that's easy to automate too. We can use our uh, crafters to do that. And if we look here real quick, I went ahead and set all these up. You can see that they're being backfilled ever so slowly. I need to throw some more silicon in there. I'm going to just throw, let me just throw a couple stacks. So my goal here is I want this filled with redstone completely. I want this filled with uh, silicon completely. Silicon, pressed silicon, printed silicon. And I want uh, all of the, that to be true in all these cases. And then I want this to be fully back stuffed with silicon and this to be fully back stuffed with printed silicon. Because that way, when we request something, we're not waiting for redstone or silicon to run through the system. They're already here waiting. Um, we can just press the circuit that we need, drop it down press it, run it out, and then the system can catch up with the raw materials. So I'm actually going to stick some redstone in here. We should be getting pretty close on redstone, but I do have some. I got rid of all the circuits. Basically, there's no circuits left over here. These are processors. Um, and you can see we've been printing a lot of circuits. So we're kind of getting ready for more AE2. But anyhow, this is done. Let us go take one quick look at our storage system before I sign off. And then we're at a wrapping up point. Next time, I think I will probably do some AE2 stuff unless another project comes up in the interim. I, I do want to make a, uh, a cobble compressor to do compressed cobblestone because we will need that. Uh, there's iron chest plate, which we haven't done yet. And you can see I'm going to have to deal with mystical flowers. They're probably just accumulating from uh, an overflow drawer. So if I take this out of here and I find one of these should have an empty slot still. Yeah, there we go. I'll stick iron in there. And it'll disappear in a second. There you go. So we've got most of this under control. Our, our resource management for what's coming in is is in pretty good shape now. We shouldn't have to deal with any, you know, overflowing harvesters or anything like that. Uh, since the inscribers are running pretty hard and they do all use power, let's take a look at our rice. And we have plenty of rice coming in, so we're accumulating more at this point. And that puts us in pretty good shape. Our milk supply is is fine. Uh, looks like we're in good shape there. So I think that's a good place to stop. Thanks as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any comments or, you know, want to, want to keep up with what's going on on the channel, leave me a comment, uh, subscribe if you like, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.